about time, it's about space, it's about saving the human race. It's about hate, it's about love, it's about everything above. It's about war, it's about peace, it's about changing history. It's about you, it's about me, it's about time. To it's a new day, and folks, it's Thursday night, and you know what that means. It's time for All In with Art Cardos. Good morning, Kim. How are you today? I'm doing great. And Art, let's remind our listeners that uh, we always welcome calls, and Art loves to hear from our listeners. Call in and talk to him at 610-539-TALK, 610-539-8255, or you can reach him at 1-877-667-1180. Art, how are you this morning? I am outstanding and superlative, but Kim, don't worry, I'm getting better. (laughs) And you know, as we talk about what's going on in the world, and there's all kinds of ways you can go with it, the most important thing to remember as a Christian is that you're a Christian. And that God's plan for you is to have success. Now, I want. I want to. I was listening earlier, you know, and I, I know that um, there's a lot of concerns today, and mm. and rightly so. Yes, indeed. And you know, it, I think we're in a time where um, the Lord is separating the sheep from the goats. Well now, said. Now, go ahead. You want to say? Go ahead, well say. said. I agree. Well, yeah, so I just want to tell everybody in starting out: don't be a goat. Okay, let's be the sheep. And the sheep will hear, know his voice. And, and that's mostly what we have to talk about when it comes to what's going on. You know, uh, everywhere you go, people are talking about uh, the influx of potential uh, refugees, right? And what, how should our reaction be? What should we be thinking as the Lord would want us to do. Now, there's all kinds of ways you can, you can twist that, obviously. Oh, well, we got to help everybody. And we do. We have to love our neighbors, and uh, we have to love our enemies, too. Yes. But that doesn't mean we have to invite them in to live in our house. Uh, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Until they clean up. That's wise, uh, right? <laughs> clean up their act a little bit. But we, we can do different things with that. So right now, what we're seeing is an awareness factor. Uh, I don't, I, you know, it's interesting, but darkness never looked darker till it's next to white and right now it's being exposed isn't it yes it is great point art very great point yeah i don't think anyone can in their right mind is going to sit there and say that there's not something wrong with what's going on around the world as a matter of fact uh most people uh that i talk to it's quite obvious to them that things are kind of exploding not in a good way yes Hey, do you think, Art, this is what leading from behind might look like? It is not only what it looks like. It, you see, we have a, what we call, we don't have a people problem. We have a demon problem, okay? And demons that are just bent, and, uh, hell-bent on destroying God's word have infiltrated into people, okay? And those people carry demons. Now, You know, would you invite a demon-possessed person to live in your house? I mean, I might build them another one and go over there and minister to them, but I don't know that I'd have them living right next to me. Okay, so what we have here is we have a spiritual problem in this country. And if that spiritual problem is not addressed, we will continue to see more of the same. You know, one of the things that uh, I heard uh, people talking a lot about is, you know, what's going to happen to America? What's going to happen to this country? Well, let's break it down because where it really starts is before you can clean up the world, I always used to, a a good way to handle this is you got to clean up your bedroom. And so each individual person is responsible and accountable to the Lord to live according to his word. That's right. Now, if we will take his word and use it in our lives uh, then it brings up this next scripture, which uh, some, somebody said to me yesterday, you know, I was in a business meeting, you know, and I was sitting there and somebody just said, uh, hey, what do you think of ISIS? Well, <laughs> that's an easy answer, you know, but what came out of my mouth 
wasn't what I thought of ISIS. What came out of my mouth was, a thousand might fall at my side, ten thousand at my right, but it shall not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I look and see the reward of the wicked, for I have made the Lord God, even the Most High, my habitation, and no evil will befall me, neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. Now listen, as a Christian group, church, if you're listening, God's word is final, not the enemy's. Fear doesn't rule. Faith and love does. When Christians pick up the word of God and declare it into the earth, we have been given not a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and sound mind. Now, what does that mean? Power, power, power. That is not just something you lightly speak about. Okay, power is strength. Power is everything. God's word is power when we use it and we use it. So uh, uh, on, on purpose, you know, and now we have a reason to pray. As I know you guys are having prayer tomorrow. Yes. Um, you know, and, and you guys have organized and whoever down in this area are praying. And that's very important to pray. Number one. Decide what it is and who it is that you are in Christ. Are you a winner or a loser? You can't have it both ways. Do you believe God's word or do you think maybe it works sometime? God's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. His son died on a cross, shed every ounce of blood. That blood is actually on display in heaven to prove that everything his word says absolutely gets carried out. But we as Christians have to take his word and use it, put it to work. And you can't, you, you can't have it both ways. I mean, there's churches today, I know, I know you guys were talking about it earlier too. There's churches today who are just falling away. They think they can just switch that word around and use it when they want it and not when they don't. Well, guess what? That church is going to fall to the ground and I would get out of it. So the time has come to make decisions. Are you a sheep? Are you a goat? And if you want to be a goat, you'll be treated like a goat. But if I want to be a sheep, I'm getting in my father's house. And in my father's house, there are many mansions. And he will protect me. And he will protect me in, in a lot of ways. And you as well. So make a decision today. You're a sheep, not a goat. Now, yes, fear, all of a sudden, fear is showing up, isn't it, Kim? Oh, it's 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 permeating. It's it's people are just oh, jumping out of their skins. They are, and, and it, it it's the beginning of a decision. Will I react in fear, or will I react by faith? Now, depending on what you have programmed yourself with the Word of God, if you're programmed with the world, and if you're listening to all the opinions of all the newscasters, you're going to go nuts. I'll tell you that right now. You've got to at some point take God's word and make it real in your life. And for me, God's word is final authority. So let me read you something here from Psalm uh, 112, actually. Okay, and uh, Psalm 112 is an interesting psalm in the sense that he says, blessed is the man who fears the Lord. Now, let's just stop there, <laughs> okay, because fearing the Lord isn't the same as fearing ISIS. Okay, fearing the Lord is actually being, in a hum humble way, acknowledging the awesomeness of God. Okay, so blessed is the man who fears the Lord. Now, if we elevate the Lord in our life, we don't have to allow fear in because it's a different kind. This is a faith-filled awesomeness about God. So blessed is the man who fears the Lord. He delights greatly in in his commandments. Why do you think people would delight in the commandments? It's kind of like delighting in a speed limit, right? <laughs> you know, I said, why did they put that sign there? But uh, you delight in his commandments because you know they will bless you. To keep them is to be blessed. And so when you acknowledge the fact that everything he has said is to protect us, to help us, to guide us, guard us, lead us, then you delight in them because you say, thank you. Thank you for eliminating all the problems that I normally could have. So that's why you would delight in it. His descendants, talking about the man who, his, who acknowledges the Lord, his descendants will be mighty in the earth. 
the generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Unto the upright there arises light in darkness. Now, we're the upright if you take the word of God. There arises light in darkness. So right now, with all the darkness in the world, our light has to shine as bright and will shine brighter than ever before. So the church has to step up. And uh, unto us is also given the uh, the job of uh, exposing evil and defining why it's well, evil. That's what, and, 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 that's, and the light will. Yes. Right? So it's becoming real obvious that there are two sides here. Mm-hmm. And I think that is what peop, ever, all of us have to acknowledge. We acknowledge we, ha- we see there's two sides, good and evil, life, death, That's right. blessing, cursing. Which will you choose? As a believer, you need to choose God now. And if you're not sure if you cho- chose the Lord, do it today. I'm carrying in my pocket a round to it. You know what a round to it is? No, I don't. Or it's a round it? piece of thing that says to it on it. And it's <laughs> it's a round to it. And it says, get a round to it. <laughs> and it. on the back side, it says, say yes to Jesus. Don't say you didn't ever get a round to, to it. it. <laughs> so I've got a lot of round to it's for people today if they just wake up. <laughs> And where do we get them from, Mart? <laughs> well, I guess we'd have to talk to the station. That's here, great. But, That's great. But at the same time, I want to encourage people to continue to pray for this station, continue to bless this station financially in every way as we go to break. Think about how you can be a blessing to WFYL and all that's going on here. God's Word is at work today. Right. Folks, we're up against a break. You're listening to It's a New Day, specifically All In with Art Cardos. We'll be right back after this break. Every father, every mother, every sister. I'm Scott Adams. I'm Leonora Cravetta. Together we make the Scott Adams Show, where we discuss politics, faith, culture, and current events from a conservative perspective, yet always fair and balanced with a twist. Broadcasting live on WFYL, 1180 AM, weekdays at 6 AM. Leonora, did you just say broadcasting live on WFYL, 1180 AM, weekdays at 6 AM? That's right, Scott. So set your dial to 1180 AM and pull the knob off. What would an extra $250 a month mean to you? For some, it's a little financial breathing room. For others, it's a car payment, a home repair, or help with college tuition. Hi, I'm Jay Farner, president of Quicken Loans, and I've got some great news if you're looking to save money on your mortgage. All it takes is a simple phone call to Quicken Loans at 800-QUICKEN to see if you qualify for the government's Home Affordable Refinance Program, or HARP. Folks who refinance with HARP can save an average of $250 a month. That's $3,000 a year. Our home loan experts fully understand the HARP guidelines, and they'll walk you through our streamlined process. And for five years in a row now, J.D. Power has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction. And for the second year in a row, they've also ranked us highest in mortgage servicing. Call 800-QUICKEN or visit quickenloans.com. Visit jdpower.com for award information. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states. NMLSconsumeraccess.org, number 3030. All right, everybody in the car, let's go. What are we going to do first when we get there, Mom? Go for a hike? Sure. What about canoeing? Can we go canoeing, too? I don't see why. How long does it take to get to the forest? It's not that far, sweetie. <sighs> are we there yet? Yep, we're here. Already? It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a neighborhood park or green space near you. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service. It's about time. It's about space. It's about saving the human race. It's about hate. It's about love. It's about everything above. It's about war. It's about peace. It's about changing history. It's about you. It's about you. And don't you think, don't you think, it's about time. Good morning and welcome back to It's a New Day, folks. It's Thursday and during the 8 o'clock hour, we have all in. Are you all in? Amen. Art, 
Cardos is our host in art. I think you're in. I'm in. I know you're in. You know, and I was listening to that last commercial. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Where is it we're going? That's the most important question. Don't get in a cla- uh, car or don't get on a plane with somebody who doesn't know where they're going because you just go in circles. And unfortunately, you know, Kim, you know, I, and, and it's real. You know, I know that people are afraid of what could happen, and I agree with that. And I do. And I think that we have leadership in this country right now who is not interested in the spiritual aspect of what is occurring. Matter of fact, they may be led on purpose or they may not be led on purpose by all this demonic. We don't know that. But here's what the church can do. And listen, anybody who considers yourself part of the church, we have been given the right to take authority over demonic activity. We bind those spirits, and we're going to pray in a minute here about this. We're going to take authority over the town of Jefferson. We're going to take authority over the Lehigh Valley. We're going to take authority over Philadelphia. We, we have been granted that right. Who are you? We're, we are Christians. What does that mean? Well, let's see, Art. You can't talk so strong. What do you think? You don't know what God's got planned. I do. I read the end of the book, guys, and you should too because I know what he's got planned. Some of it's not good, but it's not for you. If you are in God's word, he has separated you. He will protect you. You are guarded, guided, and will be led right around it. You know, in the middle of all the droughts and all the famines, and that well, everybody goes back to the Old Testament, you know, and, you know, what did God, he always rose up people or a prophet or someone to one man, one man, I could go through all stories, but the one man would be the reason that everybody else got to eat or that everyone else found what they needed. It was always one person. Art, right, that's a great point. It, it It's never the majority in Scripture, but when someone steps up to the plate, we were talking about David earlier today. Yes. Who uh, said, who is this defying the God? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? <laughs> we'll take him out. Who is this guy? And, and, but the other part of the David story was the king kept saying, David kept also saying, what does the guy get that takes out Goliath? What does he get? He gets, oh, he gets the princess. He gets the kingdom. He gets a new house. He gets to be favored. What does the guy get that takes out Goliath? Well, I take these. I take out the beers. I take out this. I've been doing this with the Lord all my life. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this ISIS, this little demon? Now, I, I, I grant you, it's serious. I'm not trying to belittle the seriousness. But know who God is. God is bigger, bigger, much bigger than any situation, circumstance, or problem that you come up against when you begin to acknowledge him and understand that he has you covered when you take his word and put it on yourself. David was more interested as he gets the princess, you know, and and there was a real mission in that for him, but he took Goliath out, didn't he, with one little stone. Great motivation, huh? (laughs) Great motivation. So what's our motivation today? America, you know, the love of this country, the love of, first of all, as Christians, we are here to bless others. So how do you bless someone? I mean, how do you help someone? If you're a poor person, and, and maybe the word poor in spirit, poor financially at all, it's all poor. If you're really hurting and you're listening to this program, well, I understand that you're hurting. And we need to pray to change that. But your mission in life is to give to others. Now, people cannot give out of lack. When, the, when you have abundance, you give. When you have more, you give. You have patience. You have more patience, you can give patience. If you have more love, you can give love. If, if all your needs are met, then you're not trying to find a morsel of bread for you. You're looking for it for somebody else. And today, I'm speaking to people out there. It's time to be the biggest givers you ever have been. You want to be protected? You want to see God protect you and your family? Start to give over the top. I'm talking about sowing seed to ministries like this station, others that the Lord's given you, but to sow seed. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and flowing over shall men bring unto your bosom. What don't we get about that? So if you want to prosper in the midst of weakness, problems, uh, no matter what, if you want to prosper, follow God's word, not fear. Oh, but you don't know, companies are going to be, my business is going to, oh my gosh, my health, oh my, my, I feel faint, I feel fearful. Bible says, do not fear. 
do not fear. And, and also says that anything apart from faith is sin. Oh, well, everybody knows that, don't they? Stepping on my toes this morning. <laughs> well, anything apart from faith, what does that mean? So through faith, by grace. You ever heard that one? I have. Through faith, by grace. So what now, in this particular situation, we have to release faith. What is the faith? Our faith is for our families. Number one, everybody always thinks about their family first, but then extended family, the church. But who is the church? The believers who want to come under the umbrella of actually being one. I mean, that doesn't mean you can vote for somebody who's putting up things that are violating God's laws. I'm sorry. You've got to make a choice today. Get all in or get out. Because God isn't going to, he'll get, you might make it to heaven. That's fine. You're going to be in kindergarten because you don't understand the concept that God's word is final authority. You want to be in kindergarten? That's fine. You know, the Bible says when we walk through heaven, we're going to glow and there's going to be a light that emanates from us. And we're going to have different stones depending on what, you know, like, you know, like they call them like diamonds and topazes, depending on what you did on earth. People are going, this is the only time in all of eternity where a person has a chance to change how heaven is going to be for all the rest of eternity. Mm -hmm. So right now, as we're thinking about all these things, it's the time to sow. It's the time to give. It's the time to pray. It's the time to pull down strongholds. And, 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 and I know we have a couple minutes here, so I'd like to do a prayer, Kim, if you don't mind. Please, if you yes. would join me in prayer. Sure. Because we want to pray for our audience. Anyone listening right now, you may have a, a physical need, a personal financial need, or maybe you're just sitting there stewing in fear because of what everybody's talking about, about ISIS and everything. So let's pray for this country. Let's pray for all our needs. Just right now, go before the Lord, lift up a need to him, and let me pray, and let's just agree. Can we just agree? Heavenly Father, we come together today as believers who want to believe and receive all that your word has in it. Father, yes, we have needs, but we also have areas to sow into and to give. We pray for the seed for the sower. I thank you, Lord, for giving us that seed. And Father, we take authority right now over every demonic ISIS spirit, or any demonic spirit that's trying to destroy human life. And we break the power of it in this country. We bind it and command it according to the blood that was shed at Calvary to cease its ungodly activity. And you will not come near here. You will not come here. You will not come here. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for the overseas. We pray for France. And we pray for all those that they would have their eyes of understanding opened to see that it is a spiritual battle. And we take authority, Father, over every demonic spirit anywhere that's trying to destroy Christian life. We command it to cease, and we break its power in Jesus' name. And finally, we pray for every listener of this audience, whether it's financial, physical, spiritual, mental, any area of their life. Father, heal them now and let your word show them how real you are. This is not a, a fantasy world. This is the word of God. And we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And folks, if you want to be prayed over, if you need to talk to somebody, call us. We're at 610-539-8255. By somebody, I mean Art. Art is a very compassionate, caring person and wants to hear from you. We'll be right back after this break. You're listening to It's a New Day. Stay with us. <clears throat> it's about you. It's about me. It's about time.
This is a Fox News Alert. I'm Joe Chiro. The hunt is over for the chief architect of the Paris terror attacks. Confirmed by the prosecutor's office here, Abdel Hamid Abaoud has been identified as one of the people killed when heavily armed police stormed an apartment in northern Paris in the early hours of yesterday morning. The prosecutor saying he was identified based on skin samples. Fox to Simon Owen in Paris. Abaoud was a Belgium national. Police officials say a woman killed during the raid was the cousin of that alleged mastermind of last week's attacks. She has been identified already in the press as 26-year-old Hasna Aitbulachon, someone said to be obsessed with jihad. Meantime, there have been fresh raids in Brussels overnight. Fox's Amy Kellogg is believed the woman detonated a suicide vest after an exchange with police. This is a Fox News Alert. Being considerate and generous towards the needs of others is important to God. From Scripture, we know that God loves a cheerful giver. Hi, I'm Doug Floro, President and Certified Financial Planner at MFB Wealth Management. Blessing others can be a great motivation for us to consistently save and invest. Over the years, I have worked with many believers like you to help them develop a plan that allows them to give generously, save responsibly, and spend wisely. For solid biblical financial planning, call MFB Wealth Management at 215-723-8999. MFB stands for My Father's Business from Luke 249 when Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. MFB Wealth Management, 215-723-8999. Also on the web at mfbwm.com. Securities and advisory services offered through Genius Wealth Management, member FINRA, SIPC. Here's Minute with the Master, brought to you by Bella Victor. Today's question is, why should we have a thankful heart? Philippians 4, 6, and 7 reads, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Yes, a thankful heart produces a peaceful heart. A thankful heart helps us to be focused on God. A thankful heart frees us from worrying. And a thankful heart helps us to stay in the fullness of God. So my dear friend, this season of Thanksgiving, let us train ourselves to be God-centered instead of being me-centered or problem-centered. We benefit from this, and so does God. It blesses God. Amen. This is a liberating truth brought to you by Bella Victor. For more information, contact Bella at minutewiththemaster.com. Dad, this is fun. I didn't think I liked kayaking. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. But I think it's time to head back in. Okay. Can we come back? Sure. Hey, be careful getting out of the boat. It's a kayak, Dad. (laughs) I'm going to return the kayak. Can we walk home? How about a taxi? It's a short fare from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a neighborhood park or green space near you. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service. It's about time, it's about space, it's about saving the human race. It's about hate, it's about love, it's about everything above. It's about war, it's about peace. Good morning and welcome back to It's a New Day. Folks, it's Thursday during the 8 o'clock hour, and you know what that means. It's all in with Art Cardos. Art, if people want to call you or get in touch with you, um, I know there's a couple different ways they can do it. Well, let's do the 877-667-1180. And text to... Or they can text in if they wanted to uh, hear the program anytime. They can, when they're driving, they could text in the words all in to 72727. And that's courtesy of our mobile marketing. Thanks, Rick, for all you're doing there to make sure that people can easily get this programming. You know, we have, we are talking about, you know, being solution oriented people, oriented people. Um, the Bible is all about answers. And I know there are those who say, well, you can't believe everything in the Bible. Well, I pray for you guys because one day you'll catch up and you'll understand that every word of that Bible, every, every matter of fact, every chapter of the Bible, Old Testament and New, is a picture of Jesus. And if you'll take the time to read it and meditate on it, and um, you, you will find that uh, it's so obviously there. God wants you to prosper. His will is for you to overcome. 
And the purpose of Jesus dying on a cross was not so you could look at the cross and say, oh, poor me, I'm such a sinner. Yes, that's step one. Step two is you have now been made a joint heir with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. What are you going to do about it? He has come that we have might have life and have it more. Abundantly. And, you know, people say that. But then they turn around and say, well, you don't know how it's gone for me, Art. Oh, my God. You have I never no- say that. No, no, I never say you say that. Kim. <laughs> Kim, I think you're one of the few that keeps things going in the right direction. Uh, but that, That's not. My nose is growing, Art. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you that. I'll tell you for sure that God is not double minded. He didn't do it one day for one person and not for another. The only variable in all this is is our thinking and what we choose, life or choose death. And and you have that opportunity listening. Choose God's word. You, If you want this problem coming to your house, then keep talking about it coming to your house. If you want to be broke, keep talking that you're broke. Broke, busted, sick, and disgusted does not sound like any kind of God I want to serve. So which God are you serving? And uh, I think and we, we go back to Psalm 112 here. I started to read it, and of course, me, I get all off on different directions here because the Lord's, we, let, we hope the Lord is leading everything that's going on here. But I was talking about um, uh, the, the wealth and riches will be in his house for the man who's, who lifts up the Lord. Now, the reason for that, God wants you to be wealthy and rich. Why? What the heck is this word rich? Oh, but Art, you know, it's easier for the camel to pass through the eye of the needle than for the rich men to enter the kingdom of God. Well, get it right, because the camel did go through the eye of the needle. He just had to get down on his knees, take off all the bags. As a matter of fact, the eye of the needle was a door in a wall, okay? It was in the old days where they had the big forts. They had a little doorway at night. They closed the big gate so the enemy couldn't get in. And they'd have the little door, they called it the eye of the needle. Now, the camel could go through the eye of the needle, but he had to take the bags off, they'd search it. He'd get down and scrunch down his knees a little bit, and he'd make it through the door. Okay, so are you afraid to be rich? Hey, listen, if you keep giving it all away, you don't have to worry about it. So sowing and reaping, giving, why do you think God wants us to work anyway? There's two systems here. you got the Babylonian system, which says we go to work and make money. But if you really want to know what he's saying about that, he's saying, so that you can bless others. And so if the money isn't really to pay our bills. It's to bless others. And if we take that money and use it to do that, you'll live off of the faith part where God will start bringing it in from every direction. That's so, a great point, Art. I really appreciate you making that. Well, you know, Kim, we get a little sidetracked, all of us, and, and not maybe a lot sidetracked, you know. <laughs> But the word of God is the word of God. Wealth and riches will be in his house. God says if you elevate him and put him first, it's going to be there. And, and your right, our righteousness will endure forever. Unto the upright there arises light in darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteousness. A good man deals graciously and lends. Well, you can't lend if you don't have money to lend. And so God wants people to be able to lend and give and take care of people. He will guide his affairs affairs with discretion. Surely he will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. That means your story is going to live on forever. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. I would call what's going on in the media right now evil tidings tidings he says here in psalm 112 and i could go through the bible and find it all over but you aren't to be afraid of evil tidings his heart is steadfast that means it's not going to change i'm not going to change because some demon stuck his ugly head up i'm sorry that demon has no power over us and um and so his heart is steadfast trusting in the lord his heart is established is your heart established in the word of god or is it established in fear? He says again, he will not be afraid. Until he sees his desire upon his enemies. In other words, our enemies are going to fall if they come against us. Now, we have to acknowledge who we are. Identify as a Christian who you are. 
Are you a weak one? Are you a strong one? Do you think God has a double mind that some people are going to make it and some aren't so sure? And Listen, we need to get together with the church, the church that believes and receive victory today over all of our towns. And, you know, and, and, and if, the, if we don't feel the president is doing the right thing, which we don't, I, I mean, we need to pray and bind that spirit of ignorance or whatever it is that's causing. And I'll tell you, uh, there are a lot of thoughts on this because in reality, the demon that controls the kind of decisions that are going on in this country also wants this country out of control and in chaos. It, it, it could, could not stand for hundreds of years that Christianity was being preached freely in this country and because of this country and christianity being preached the entire world has benefited and when you look at how much money is donated from america to all the other nations you'll see why our way of life works it sounds like you're saying art you can't out bless god you cannot out bless god and this is the only country in the world for all these years that has allowed that to be freedom freedom now satan thinks he can just take over and destroy that freedom he does not want you to worship freely they want sharia law okay and that is to say well you either go our way or we kill you okay and unfortunately that is what this i uh, the radical groups are saying yes. you know you have 10 seconds make a decision so what we are talking about is that we have not been given a spirit of fear we have been given a spirit of dominion through Christ, yes, we are humble. Don't ever think I don't think I'm humble. I'm on my knees before the Lord in humility, knowing that I am seated in Christ at God's right hand because I'm in Christ. And now he's given us the power to tread upon the lions and the scorpions and cast down spiritual wickedness from high places and all demonic activity. And we, in Praise the name the of Jesus, will do that. That's awesome, Art. <laughs> and it's about time that we got that vision that you're saying that uh, uh, where are, are the uh, Joshua and Caleb's among us, huh? Well, it's time. And if there are any out there, we need to find you. You need to find us and you need to agree with us in prayer. You, need, you will find the Lord will be showing you who to really pray with. Just because you go and have a few nice songs, that doesn't mean it's prayer. That might be nice in a calming, soothing way. But it is time for the warriors of the word. I call them the armies of Jesus, the armies for Jesus. They're not with weapons of this world, but they're weapons of a supernatural world, of a, of a spirit world, for the pulling down of strongholds and demon activity. And that's what's going on in this country. We're in a spiritual war, and we've got to defeat it with spiritual weapons. All right, why don't you remind our listeners once again uh, how to call in if someone is afraid today if someone yeah is i'm a little wound up today but you know what we, we come down to earth and you know and, and any problem or any situation if somebody would like to call in please call in 610-539-8255 or 877-667-1180 uh you know i do get wound but we also know that there are needs locally there are things that we can talk about uh to uh, help people in a in a, to a now way for today because there might be bills people have to pay this week and you know you wonder where that money's coming from well there's a way god has a way god has always had a way he wants to get it to you our job is to stir you up mm -hmm. so that maybe you'll actually believe he will get it to you and if you say it enough times, you repeat it, yeah. or it, it, uh, the word uh, does not return void unto the Lord. We just don't know the timing. So, folks, uh, be encouraged today and look up. Uh, uh, how many times was Israel in a position, Art, where uh, they had to do that? And I don't believe God ever failed them once. And when you look back at the early church, they were willing to risk it all, weren't they? Yes, they were. You know, whether they were, if they went to prison, well, they shook the prison. Uh, yeah. Okay. And they had, they had okay. prayer meetings. They so <laughs> wherever we are, we are to prosper in the Lord. We are to praise his name. We are to just thank him and know that he is absolutely the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings inside of us. He's living in us. He's living in us right now. And all we have to do is acknowledge it and go forward in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. That's uh, folks. 
So uh, in contrast to the bad news, there's the good news that Art is talking about this Amen. morning. And that's, really not to, that's not to eliminate the bad. It's there, but we have to take God's word. Great. What, what's that verse? Greater is he that it's is? It's in us than he that is in the world. Amen. Well, we've, uh, uh, we're up against a break, folks. Uh, the time goes so fast. Stay with us. You're listening to All In, which is a part of It's a New Day. We'll be right back. It's about me. It's about time. Friends, Janet Parshall here, host of In the Market with Janet Parshall. I'm excited about partnering with 1180 AM WFYL to bring you a fast-paced conversation every Sunday. As you listen to In the Market, we'll examine major news stories and issues, equipping you to be bold when voicing truth in a confused and chaotic culture. I look forward to engaging my new friends at 1180 AM WFYL every Sunday at 12.05 PM on In the Market. Hi, I'm Scott Newcomer with Christian Businessmen's Connection, CBMC. Are you a Christian businessman? Do you feel like an ambassador in your workplace? In 2 Corinthians 5.20, the Apostle Paul tells us that Christ followers are ambassadors for Christ. So do you feel like one? Do you know how to walk like one? If you'd like to learn more about how to be a marketplace ambassador, walking daily in intimacy with God, how to be discipled or disciple others, how to share your faith simply in the marketplace, how to apply biblical principles to your life, and how to have a group of like-minded Christian businessmen around you to encourage you, basically to be the man God designed you to be, right where you work, right where God has you, contact us at CBMC and get connected. Just go to cbmc.com or call me, Scott Newcomer, at 610-304-1493. That's 610-304-1493. It's 3 a.m. You thought your friend was okay to drive. He was the least drunk of everyone at the party. But now, the driver he crashed into is in the ER. And your friend is facing a DUI and other criminal charges. The night didn't have to end this way. Even after one drink, your friend's abilities are impaired. So watch out for them. And make sure no one gets behind the wheel after drinking. See how you can prevent nights like this at controltonight.com. Brought to you by the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board. Trinity Associates Incorporated has been in the electrical power testing business for over 35 years. We've specialized in working for some of the biggest firms in Philadelphia, and indeed America. Not only do big firms appreciate our expertise because of their size, but they can compare us to our competitors. They appreciate our reasonable prices. In fact, many of the largest firms call us year after year for sometimes 35 years in a row. We can provide the same service for smaller firms, bringing the same expertise and reasonable prices. Call Trinity Associates Incorporated for your electrical power testing needs and a free quote. Not all electrical power testing firms are the same. Call Trinity Associates Incorporated at 610-876-6428. That's 610-876-6428. Visit their website at trinityassos.com. That's trinityassos.com. It's about time. It's about space. It's about saving the human race. It's about hate. It's about love. It's about everything above. It's about war. It's about peace. It's about changing history. It's about you. It's about me. It's about time. Good morning and welcome back to It's a New Day. I'm Kim Kennedy along with Art Cardos with All In. And uh, we are glad that you're with us, folks. This is an hour dedicated to encouraging people in the Lord. Uh, yes, there is uh, whatever's going on in a day, but then there's the Lord. And uh, Art, I think we have a couple of folks who have called in. Sure do. Uh, who's on with us? Mario? Who's Carol, Carol, are you on with us? I'm on. Good morning, Kim and Art. Good hey, morning, Carol. Good morning, Carol. How are you today? I'm wonderful. I'm getting better. <laughs> well, that's great. I'm glad to hear that. Anything in particular you were calling in about? Yes, I have, I have two questions, if I may. Um, the first, I would like you to address Matthew 11:12, which says, From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing. 
and forceful men lay hold of it. I, I, I'd like you to, to share about that art. And the other question I have is if you would address the question of suffering. So many people suffer. You're speaking of the goodness of God. How do we, how do we mesh the two? Well, absolutely. And, and, you know, the first part of what you said was that uh, we need to lay hold of what God has said in that strength. His word is strength and his word is power the suffering part is is absolutely that's the, you got both ends of it there carol that's amazing because you, you brought both in and the suffering part is that people do th- relate suffering in some cases to almost an award um like they think they do, they they should be suffering for all that they've done and uh, so what we have here is god's word that's saying that he wants us delivered from all evil he wants us delivered. He died on the cross so we wouldn't be sick, so that we wouldn't be hurting, we wouldn't be in pain, we wouldn't be broke. And it says that his bruises uh, delivered us from every disease. And, of course, we talked about where he descended into hell, defeated all the demons. So we know that God went to extreme lengths to make advances so that we don't have to suffer. Now, I know over time in the churches, different churches in particular, suffering has become almost self-inflicted. And, and people, there are people who believe that suffering somehow gives them a higher ranking with God. Well, if, if suffering were to give you a higher ranking with God, then I suggest you pray that every one of your children suffer. And I can imagine what that's going to stir up because no parent in their right mind would do that. And if God were to do that, he'd, today in our country, he'd be arrested for child abuse. So God doesn't want people to suffer. So if someone is suffering and they somehow, first of all, think it's an, an award, they need to realize it's not what they're supposed to be doing. So how did they get to the point where they are suffering or they have something that's inflicted on them? The God of planet Earth, unfortunately, was Lucifer. And he is the one who's the author of every sickness, every disease, everything that is on people. And if you encourage it to stay there, then you are allowing and tolerating the enemy to have talked you into the fact that suffering is somehow part of God's will. He's going to teach you from that. And, and he, you may learn something from that, but he's got a better plan, and he would rather you didn't. So how do you get rid of it. First of all, identify it doesn't belong there. If it doesn't belong there, it doesn't have a right to be there. And then secondly, we need to take God's word and pray and knowing that God wants it gone. And there's that conflict in the mind, right, Carol? Because people don't all know they want it to be gone. Right, right. So I don't know if I'm completely addressing what you're saying, but I do know that the biggest decision is to know that God doesn't want you to have to continue to suffer if you are suffering and you can't find a way out he'll be there with you and he will comfort you but that is not god's perfect plan for anyone's life he you wouldn't want your dog to suffer you know what would, what do people do they love their dogs they love their cats they love their animals you wouldn't want them why in the world would god want someone to suffer I I can't for the life of me think how people somehow have bought into that over the years. But they have, and I understand it. So um, I don't know. Carol, does that answer your question a little bit? Yes, that's great. I guess what I'd like to further ask you is um, when I see friends who are physically suffering and they say they believe God wants to heal them, but it doesn't happen. Right. Is it because we really don't know we think we know but that knowing is not deep within us well that's where the the word has to take deep root there has to be a deep root and if it doesn't you know the bible says you know you need to get oil in your lamp so that when that day comes where there's darkness you can actually turn the lamp up and you can see clearly and a lot of people have not put the word in enough and unfortunately that day comes and it may be a little too late in some cases to get it in fast enough but we, as other believers, can pray for them. And uh, we're going to have to move on because we've got other callers. But I want to pray for you real quick. And then maybe the Lord will lead more in this direction. Okay, Carol? 
I would love that. Thank you. Father, thank you for Carol calling in. And we thank you, Lord, that every one of her needs are met right now in Jesus' name. That every circumstance and every situation that she comes up against is already, already perfectly aligned with your word. That your word is final authority in her life. Healing, restoration in every area, home, business, financial, and physical. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Carol. God Thanks, bless Carol. You both. I know we have another caller here. Who do we have now, Kim? Uh, do we have Clay on the line? Yeah. Hey, Clay, good morning. How are you? I'm doing great, Kim. How are you today? Doing real good. Thank you. Good morning, Clay. How are you? I'm super. All right. yeah, yeah, nice to talk to you again here. And I know you're running out of time. I just have a quickie. I, we have a, uh, an organization I'm involved with, partnered with another community organization to try and raise some money this Thanksgiving for some folks in need. And we're getting down in the last couple of days, and I, and I like to have you call on the Lord to bless us these next five days so that we have a huge bounty to deliver to as many families as we can this coming week. Okay, Clay, I appreciate the call, and we'll pray for that right now. Father, we thank you that you are helping all those in need that are wondering and praying, where are they going to get the money for the food to have Thanksgiving next week? Father, we ask all of our listeners to be hearing this, and that if someone is put before you that you can bless, or if you can somehow contribute to this cause that Clay is talking about, which I know is in the Nazareth area and the Allentown, Lehigh Valley area, Father, we receive that victory, and we thank you for also showing us clearly who it is we need to bless with the food in jesus name amen praise god thank you i appreciate that thank thanks you, for the clay. call clay all right have a nice thanksgiving you folks. too you. and Bye-bye. folks if you want to contribute to that contact us here at info at 1180wfol.com uh believers in business the quaker town chapter is uh collecting money for genuinely needy families to have a good thanksgiving and Art, I know that you're involved with that. Uh, yeah, we are. Did we lose the other caller? Do we have another yes, caller? Yes, they are. Okay. Mario's gone. Okay. We, he must have had to go. I know he's a busy man. <laughs> Maybe he got an man. answer to his prayer. Okay, so we'll pray for him as well. Uh, but, yes, uh, there is a cause. Uh, we are in the uh, Lehigh Valley area collecting money through the uh, Nazareth Bath Chamber of Commerce. Uh, if someone would like to contribute, uh, we are uh, next week going to be finding families that are in need, stepping up to the register and paying for their groceries before they can. Oh, so uh, that'll be an exciting moment, and uh, that goes right along with what Clay was saying. And Art, uh, real quick, uh, we have at Believers in Business this Friday a Visitor's Day. Yes, that is in the uh, Quakertown area, meeting at the Carlton Cafe. Believers in Business is a networking group where we start in prayer. I will be there. Matter of fact, I get to speak. I think I'm a speaker. You are. And, um, and uh, so if you know someone who's a business person and they want their business to prosper. Now listen, God wants your business to prosper. Don't stay where you are. Get up. Do something. Make something happen. Come to the meeting. Carlton Cafe, 7 a.m. Friday. Indeed. We look forward to seeing you there. If you have any questions, contact us at info at 1180wfol.com. Folks, we're out of time. Stay all in. We'll be back. We won't be back next week because it's Thanksgiving. We wish you a happy Thanksgiving. I know Art does. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving and bless those. Bless them all around you. Just bless people. Have a great day. In Psalm 39.